Well, hello everyone. Here we are, as promised, 11.30 Central Time. We're going to do a live lesson. And while we're waiting for everybody to come on, just thought I'd do a little chit-chat, see how you guys are doing. Remember, you can comment in the live stream, and I can answer your questions right now. We get a lot of emails and things that we can't answer, but, uh, you know, a lot of requests and stuff like that. But right here, I'm going to answer your questions. So go ahead and start commenting. Let me know if, if you're watching. Let me know you're here and where you're from. That's always pretty cool to know where you guys are from. And uh, as I said, we will start the live lesson. I uh, just want to give everybody a chance to get on who's uh, been waiting for this and to get on to have the, the live complete lesson. Uh, but we'll let you guys know I have been doing a, well, it's low carb, but we call it keto diet now, right? Yeah, so it's the only thing that works for me. So that's what I'm doing these days. And, you know, I'm right between, uh, you know, those belt... Uh, notches <laughs> between four and five so on four it sags down on five it's a little tight so i'm, I'm in between somebody asked, when the somebody asked when my birthday is it is september the 30th and the year is 1973 right so I'm, i'll save you some math there. i'm 47 so uh yeah september the 30th and what's what's weird is i always remember it being cold on my birthday but the last decade or so, right, it's, it's, it's always been hot. So it's kind of weird weather's, weather's changing. But, yeah, that's my birthday. Cool. I wonder if Wooters, Wooter told me he was going to show up. Is he on there yet? He's not, but Shauna. Is here. Is here. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Teresa. How you guys doing? Great. So this is going to be a great lesson. It really is. It's going to be something I've never done before. And it's not just a little part one teaser, you know, to get you to go to the website. Th th those are great. <laughs> Aren't they? Let you know what I'm up to. But, yeah, right hey, Wooter. Good to see you, brother. Uh, Jamie Johnson asked where that accent is from. Okay, so Jamie asked where this accent Janine, is. Janine, sorry. Janine asked where my accent is from. Well, I am from Central Texas. <laughs> and we talk really hick <laughs> or country, if you want to say it that way. If you ever listen to country music, that's kind of how we talk. And the funny thing is, you know, if I get around a bunch of people from up north, subconsciously I kind of clean it up and I talk more correctly. But if you're around family, you know, it's just really, you know, one of the things we say is, I'm, I'm fixing to go to the store. Fixing. What does that mean? I'm fixing to go to the store. It means I'm about to go to the store. <laughs> that's what we say. Oh, and, uh, Gary here. Oh, Gary. How you doing, Gary D? And Good to see you, brother. Yeah. Oh, someone said next time enable super chat so they can donate. That's a great idea. <laughs> I guess yeah, yeah. We'll take donations. That's great. But I love you guys commenting. That's great. Hey Andrew, how you doing from the UK? That's so neat. You know, you can connect that way from people across the world. Okay, so Janine is from North Carolina, so we, we have the same, same uh, you know, accent, sort of. Yeah, there's, there's little differences, though, isn't there? And uh, even differences between parts of Texas, you know, it's, so you, you really have uh, some variations there. Our, our Londoners love your Texas Southern Londoners, yes. You know what I love about the English accent is you automatically sound more intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Just automatically, you know, so uh, that's cool. Anyway, yeah, that's great. Um, so any, anyway, those of you who are joining, we're about to start the live lesson. Just want to get everybody a chance to start. And again, comment as we're doing this. If you have a question about what I'm showing you, right, you know, right here, we can have interaction. Uh, because probably if you're having a problem with something, everyone else is having a problem with it too. They're just too scared to say anything. So... Okay, so um, my wife, Shauna, who's in the control room, just gave me a great idea to give you guys a tip on how to be notified when we're doing a live lesson, and she's going to tell me because I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know how to get, uh, maybe somebody can tell us. I bet one of you know. Yeah, make sure you're subscribed and following us on YouTube, and uh, if someone know. Yeah, a little bell. Oh, I know about the bell, yeah, and you enable that so that you're notified when we're doing a live lesson but I because I plan to do these Mondays at 11:30 central time just like today all right so how far are we into it Shauna five minutes in all right that's probably good we'll, we'll start here in just a second so 
what this is about, this live lesson. I hope you're at your piano keyboard right now. I hope you're not just watching. I hope you're actually at your keyboard or even, you know, taking notes if you want to do it that way. This is something I've never done before, okay? This is going to help you if you've ever wanted to read notes or if you want to read notes better. It'll also help you if you don't care about notes and you just want to learn how to play by ear better. You want to have better theory. You want to understand chords, how the language of music works. It'll help you if you want to get your technique better. So any of those areas, it's going to help you. So you don't necessarily have to be a note reader. You don't necessarily have to be someone who just plays by ear. All are welcome here. This is going to benefit everyone, I think. So that's what we're doing today. So the lesson I chose is actually a Bach prelude. And it's going to help you with not only if you like Bach, but maybe, you know, you're not into Bach. It's going to help you play Elton John. I promise I'm going to show you that in just a second. Elton John, Billy Joel, Leonard Skinner, Led Zeppelin. It's so closely connected, guys. You're going to freak out when you see this. So uh, we're going to get started here with the lesson. It's going to help you with any area of music that you're into, I think. Okay, now, the first thing, though, we have to be able to sit and have a lesson for 30 minutes straight without hitting, without checking Facebook, without fast-forwarding the video. Let's get to something else. See if you can sit here as if we were sitting side by side, which in a way we are. If you can sit through a 30-minute lesson, because that's typically what piano lessons were when I was a kid. That's what it was. For 30 minutes, to pay attention for 30 minutes without any distractions, any, any interruptions. So that's my first challenge to you, okay? All right, here we go. Let's just go ahead and do the, the board shot here, Shauna. So... <clears throat> I wrote in the letters, for those of you who are, are used to and familiar and love my notation style with the letters, hey, you might even learn to read music a little bit <laughs> while doing this. Um, and those of you who are note readers, who, who like to read notes, so that's on there for you too, okay? So something there for everyone. <clears throat> but I like to use this first Bach prelude. We're just going to do a snippet of it. Um, take a listen to it first. I know you've heard that probably. Um, I think Schubert wrote an Ave Maria to it. Very beautiful. Now, <clears throat> what's going to happen here is you just heard a little chord pattern. I'm going to show you something real quick. Listen to this, and we're going to stick with the side camera. Okay? You ever heard that? Okay. Well, listen to this. Same thing. Bach, Elton. <laughs> I'm going to show you another one. Let's see. Uh, Billy Joel, always a woman, right? Chord patterns chord patterns. No matter if you're doing rock music, pop music, classical music, country music, blues, there are chord patterns. And this piece is going to help you to do that. Now Bach, okay, you have all these composers. You can take all the best ones, you know, you can think of. Just name all the composers. I mean, you can use, you know, uh, contemporary pop music. That's fine in the last, you know, 20th century and all that. Uh, you can take your best composers. Bach sits above them all. He really does. Uh, and, you know, we think of that, you know, that's old classical music. Who wants to play that? That's just, no, it's full, full of stuff that you can use to help you to play the music you want to play today. Okay. Whether it's, you know, pop music, rock music, whatever. All right. I'm going to show you how. Let's get to the board. Sean, everybody likes the imagery of Elton John and reading <laughs> <laughs> I just heard the comment that everyone likes the idea of Elton John meeting Bach. Now, you know, El from our podcast, right? There's a podcast, our artist series podcast, if you haven't checked it out, Elton John, his style. Shauna and I wrote a song. We performed it and sang it. It's on YouTube. It's also on iTunes. It's a web piano teacher podcast. But anyway, Elton grew up on Bach. I know he did from listening to his music because I did as well. And he copies that Baroque style. He copies the stuff of Bach more than any other classical composer. 
I think. Yeah, and I think Elton meeting Bach would be really neat. I think he would love that. I would love that. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's move it on. So we're on a C chord here. Now, the point is a lot of music is made, well, music is made up of chords and scales. That's it. And so much of the music we play is chord patterns. And what you have to do, do you hear this? Do you hear eight tones? Or do you hear one chord? Okay, we want to get in your mind where you hear one chord and you get your hands in position for that chord. So the idea is here, whenever you're playing Elton or Billy Joe, whatever you're playing, you need to get your hand in the position for that chord that he's on. Because I guarantee you they're playing a chord pattern. And then you just move from one finger to the next. So if you tend to think of one note at a time, oh my gosh, that's so hard. And you're making it so hard on yourself. This Bach piece will help you to start to get your hand in position for the chord uh, before you start the measure. So it will really uh, speed up your, your, your playing and get you where you're really feeling the chords, you know, feeling the music. All right, so here we go. First measure. This is where we're going to practice. Middle C and E. If you don't know these notes, that's fine. Just look at my letters. Right hand has G, C, E. That's the pattern. Or that's the, that, that's the chord, actually. Here's the pattern. Left, left, right, right, right. That note's tight. You don't play it again. But it's left, left. The left hand plays the C and the E. Right hand plays G, C, E. But look, I get my fingers on the keys before I start. I don't go... E, okay, then it's a G. I get there first. I see the whole measure at once. Hold the pedal if you want. Very good. So there's the first chord. Guys, that is a C chord, C, E, G. If you haven't memorized C, E, G, get C, E, G in your mind. Whenever you see C, E, G in, in a measure, you're playing a C chord. When you recognize it, it'll start to help you in any other song that has any type of C chord. Let's go to the second measure. C, D. A, D, F in the right hand, okay? We changed just a little bit. The right hand moved up. The left hand kind of stayed where it was. So here's the next measure, the second measure. There we go. Now, what do we do? We did two measures. Did we go to the third measure? No. We tie the first and second measure together. That's how we learn. There's an old saying that says, here a little, there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept. That means... Little by little, you, you learn one thing and you get that and then you go to the next thing. If you spread yourself too thin by trying to learn too much at one time, you get bored, frustrated, and quit. A lot of you have done that, huh? All right, so let's tie the two measures together. Here we go. Here's the switch. Get ready for it. Prepare. There. Very good. Okay, now we're going to go to the third measure. B, D, G, D, F. Get the, get the chord under your fingers before you start. And then what would you do now? You'd go back and you'd tie the first three measures together. Now, I'm going to show you one way to practice a chord pattern stuff. Whenever you have that, Elton, Billy Joel, whatever, Bach, um, I said Leonard Skinner, listen to Freebird, broken chords in the right hand. Okay, here's how you do it. You play... Um, the chord all together. Squish all the notes together. Squish all the notes together. The next one. Squish all the notes together. That way your fingers get used to where they're going to go all at once. And then when you just play the, you know, the broken chords, it's easy. Okay? Let's try all three measures as we tie, make our chain a little longer. Third measure. Very good. Now, Going to go to the fourth measure. A great thing about music is that it repeats a lot. Okay, some of the chords repeat. Even large sections of the song may repeat. Okay, so that's what's going to happen here. We have the next measure is a C chord, and it repeats. Another thing is you don't have to keep up with me in this live video. Kind of, you know, do what you can to keep up. You're going to have little pauses in there. That is normal. I call those blind spots where we have to stop for a second. Everyone has those, and everyone has them at different places in the music. No big deal. They'll disappear as you play the music more and more, so don't fret. All right, so let's get to the next measure. C chord again. We already know it. How are we looking on time, Shauna? Good, you're about 15 minutes. 15 minutes, that's all right, great. Let's move on. C, E, A, E, A. Okay, so a little bit of a stretch in the right hand, but the important thing is I get my fingers in that chord position. 
Think Elton John's ever played that A minor chord? You bet. Think he's ever played it that way? You bet. C, D, F sharp, A, D. Now, I didn't go back and tie it together, because you can do that in your own time when you go back through the video and practice. C, D, F sharp, A, D is the next one. So here I go. Here's the pattern. Right? So every chord is two times, right? One, two, and then I have B, D, and then right hand G, D, G. Once, twice. All right, so as you're making your chain, okay, let's say you go four measures and your chain's pretty long. Well, then you need to make a new starting place because it's getting too long, okay? So work on those four measures. That's kind of one set. Then you, that's what, that's what line upon line. This, you know, precept upon precept. One little section. Now we go to another precept. We learn the next four measures as a separate thing. So you make a new starting place and build your chain of four and then a new starting place. See how it works? So what happens is you, you may just learn a little bit of the song in your practice session, but you'll really have it and you'll have success instead of playing through it and feeling like, man, I stink. I don't want to do this anymore. This is embarrassing, right? You'd rather have success at a small section. That's what we're going for. Moving on. All right, we did the G chord. Now we go, I love this one. Listen to this. All right, in contemporary music, we call that a major seven chord, C, E, G, B. You ever heard this? Elton John, baby, for these two measures. C major seven, A major, A minor seven. B, C, E, G, C, second time. And then the next measure, A, C, E, G, C. One little change. Whenever you're going from one measure to the next, and always notice when a lot of the notes are the same. That way the ones that's different will stand out. The only different note is the bass note, the first one, A, C. Very good. Now this one, remember you can practice like this, blocks. Here's the next one, D, A, D, F sharp, C, so. And then we go to G, B. See, that's a G chord, G, B, D, G, B. All right? So I'll play through that all, uh, in its entirety in just a second. But what you need to do when you practice this, and this really will help you, Right, you have to be able to sit through a 30-minute lesson, but you also have to have consistency. That means you practice every day at the same time for the same amount of time. Don't practice too short. Don't practice too long. Make it the same every time. Have structure. When you play, don't just sit down and start trying to play this. Say, I'm going to do one measure. I'm going to get it. I'm going to do the second measure. I'm going to get it. Then I'm going to tie those two measures together. Then I'm going to do a third measure, add it. I'm going to do a fourth measure, add it. And then I'm going to play those four measures. See if I can do them, and the one I can, I'm going to move on and just make a new starting place and try the next four measures. Yeah. Yes? Okay, Rita has a question about the sustain pedal. Okay. So to be trained after a repetition, he would need pedals. Okay, Wooter had a great question. It's about pedal, sustain pedal. I love this interaction. Bring me your questions. Um, in box day, there was no pedal, so he would have done it like this. <laughs> but we have a piano with a pedal, and so we add that. I mean, he might have used it had he had it, you know, back in the day. But we're going to use it here. What you do, you change when the chord changes. And since there is a consistent pattern of one chord per measure, I'm going to do an up-down with my pedal every time I reach the new measure. Okay, so I'm going to say what I'm doing with my foot. Okay, so my, my right foot's on that pedal. I have it down right now. And when I play the first note of the measure, I'm going to do an up-down at the same time my hands go down. It's almost like my hand going down has a lever that pushes my foot up-down, up-down. So here's my foot. Here's my foot. Up-down, up-down when my right hand goes down or my left hand goes down. bum bum, Up-down. Let me say it out loud. Here we go. Second measure. Up-down. You know what, Shauna? Maybe they can see in that video. Can, they, can you see my pedal? How about if I do, okay, out more. Yeah. All right, here we go. Up, down. Up, down. Which side? Okay, here we go. Up, down. 
up down up down and you continue that what happens is most people that you want your foot to do the same thing your hands doing so when your hand goes down you want your foot to go down so they they lift them both and down at the same time that doesn't help anything because then you have this big gap where there's no pedal all right so you have to learn that up down trick once you learn the trick you can play it you can do it on anything you play and it works really well um <clears throat> all right so consistency structure in your practice uh, the same time, same amount every day, that will build your confidence. And it'll make you not feel like you're just floating around in the sea, but that you have a definite plan to how you're going to work on stuff, okay? So I'm going to do something cool now. I'm going to play this in the style of Elton John so that you can... And I love Elton John because uh, it's not just Elton's music. He is influenced by country, blues, rock, classical, jazz, fusion, any type of music he's done. So we, we can easily take piano stuff from his repertoire and apply it, okay? So if I were to do this in Elton John style, I would have... I added some country thirds in there, and I embellished a little bit, but the core of what I was doing was Bach, right? He's the master of it all. I think God gave one guy everything, <laughs> and then it's kind of filtered down through the centuries, and Bach is a wonderful tool for helping you with all this other music that you want to play. You may just enjoy this as Bach, or you may play this, and it may help you. It, it will help you in all the other music you want to play. Um, Okay, we have about seven minutes left. I'm going to turn the front camera again. And uh, anybody have any problems with this or questions or, you know, as you're playing along? Um, Somebody said they could hear Elton John's Come Down in Time intro okay. in that box piece. Okay, someone said they could hear the Come Down in Time in, in intro in this Bach piece, definitely. I mean... The wealth of music that I have, have uh, had the pleasure of learning, it just continually bubbles up in my mind. In fact, there's no, you know, one, there's no, you know, Elton John style or, or Bach style, or I mean, uh, Billy Joel style or this. It all is interconnected. It really is. And it's amazing people can have copyright on music when it's really, it's taken from everywhere. Um, even the song, which I will not play, uh, Hotel California, because <laughs> it'll, it'll, you know, get flagged or something. But that song, starts uses arpeggios uses this stuff uh that that bach does and um it's just amazing that's a great comment yeah really you can hear all kinds of songs in this stuff um so what we'll do now we'll go a little bit further for those of you who want to learn a little more of it but here's what i want you to do your assignment first is to be able to sit through this whole 30 minute lesson without distractions without checking facebook Without, you know, you can pause the video if you're look, listening to it later and you need to, you know, time to practice. That's great. But then stick with it. Don't go to something else. Stay with it for your whole practice time. In this day and age, that's really a great accomplishment, I'll tell you, to be able to stick with something for 30 minutes. All right, let's go a little, little further. Um, where did I leave off here? Okay. I think I'm here. Well, we had, no, we did that. We did that. We did. Let's see, I think of the DA. Okay, at the top of the page. D, A, D, F sharp, C. So there's the chord there. I'm just going through those, through these so you can know them. You still need to practice in the way we talked about. G, B, D, G, B. Then you have G, B flat, and then E, G, C sharp. Then you have F, A, D, A, D. Then you have F, A flat, D, F, B. And then E, G, C, G, C. And then you have E, F, A, C, F. And you have D, F, A, C, F. And then G, D, G, B, F. And then G, C, 
or C-E-G-C-E. All right, so that is, you know, like there's a little bit left of it, but the main point is that you use this piece to get your hands in position before the chord, before you play the pattern in everything, okay? Think in terms of chords. Okay, there's groups, C, E, G, D, F, A, E, G, B, F, A, C, G, uh, A, you know, just, you can name them all. There's only seven, okay? Um, of course, you put flats and sharps on different ones, but there's only seven different letter patterns of three-note chords. Um, <clears throat> and we'll do this, I'll see you next week at 11.30 Central Time, again, right here. I'd love to hear a video if someone wants to send a video of themselves practicing this. John, yeah. They want to know where they will be able to find this piece. Okay. Um, maybe I will post this on my YouTube uh, social page. The sheet. Make sure you follow me. Yeah, the sheet for this. The one I'm practicing here, I'll post that so you guys can have something to look at. But it'll be on my YouTube uh, channel. It's one of those tabs there that where you make po with comments, you know. Kind of like, uh, yeah, just the comment page, but I'll, I can post a picture there of this, this sheet for that, so you can practice. I would love to hear a video, see a video of some of you guys practicing this, especially if it's not perfect, because none of us are perfect. We're all working on it, okay? Would love that. And the more I have response from you guys, the more that's going to encourage me to keep doing this, because uh, I would love to keep doing it if we get more and more people on board, more and more people um, trying these lessons and, and having a response. And, and the community of Web Piano Teacher just helping each other. That's what I want. Community, helping each other. That's what we're, we're all about. Um, today, going to get ready, um, record some lessons for Randy Newman. You got a friend in me. Everybody requested that from our newsletter and when they voted on songs. So got that one done. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, also going to be posting our lessons of Turn the Table by Elton John, the song that Shauna and I wrote together. You'll be able to, <clears throat> to uh, learn that. Uh, that'll help you with, with Elton John's style as well. Anything else, Shauna? No. Okay. Well, uh, one more few seconds. Why don't you ask everybody if they'd like the lesson format? Yeah. Is it part chit-chat, talking? Music? All right. How do you guys, what do you guys think about this lesson format? Do you like this? Do you wish? Huh? Uh, for Mondays on on uh, on YouTube, you what would you like? How would you like it to be different? You like the chit chat at all? Do you want more of that? Do you want more? You know, just let me let me know what you think about this because you know we, we're here for you guys. We're trying to to give something to the piano community online. So let us know. See you next Monday at eleven thirty Central Time. Bye bye.